Soren Thompson, Soren, uh, some really recent news with the men's EPE team being cut from the U.S. Olympic Training Center. What's your take on this, given the fact that you were a, a world champion on the 2012 team? Well, I think it's uh, an unfortunate development for USA fencing, not just the men's FA program, because they were the placeholder for fencing at, uh, at that center. So because there was a permanent program in place, it allowed camps to happen there and all of the weapons. It allowed us to utilize that facility uh, in ways that went way beyond just one squad. So I don't know if everybody understands that, but, but they really held down the fort on an asset that was utilized by lots of athletes. Um, the USOC has certainly gone into a mode where they're using those facilities differently than they used to. They're trying to uh, get a lot of revenue out of them, whereas before they were more dedicated to producing results. So I don't know what went into that decision, but um, maybe they found a way to kind of maximize that space uh, financially better. Uh, the bed space and so forth, there's a lot that goes into having a resident program. Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of benefit to having a concentrated training in one place uh, that won't necessarily go away because the guys have, to a large extent, come out to New York. They're going to have to change the way they train and that's hard to do in the middle of a season. But hopefully they can adjust and get organized and train together and go and get the results that they need. So some of the challenges and opportunities here, of course, on the challenge side, the fact that they're going to have to completely change their entire environment and quite possibly the routine. routine. The opportunities here, maybe the plus side, is that, like you said, there's an opportunity to train together as a, a unit. And this being an Olympic year, uh, the fact that New York is a hub, and that's where Ben Bratton, Yesa Ramirez, and a lot of the other guys at that level are, are training here. What do you see as like having more influence? Do you think it's going to be net positive with them coming to New York? It's impossible to say, you know, no one can predict how that works and, and fencing can turn on such a small thing. It could be a net positive and they could still not get the results they want. It could be a net negative, they could get the results they want. You know, a lot of things come down to very small uh, increments, a touch here or there. You can't really pin it on anything. Um, but there definitely are benefits to them all being together. Hopefully they can get training going that benefits them all you know that that can be hard to do it's it's different coaching it's not really team oriented uh fencing perhaps that everybody has been doing together so you know you have to change that adapt to um that and and you know probably if you're making those kind of changes you want to be doing them farther in advance than in the middle of the season but again that doesn't mean that it can't work it definitely can and it might be a catalyst for them to rise together and, and to go and, and achieve a lot so we'll see now, there's really a very similar dynamic between kind of this team and the team you guys had in, in 2012 with two of the athletes at that time, Cody Mattern and Seth Kelsey, both training at the OTC like Pryor and, and uh, Moody. And then on the New York side, it's currently Ben Bratton, Yesu Ramirez here, and you and Ben Bratton at the time were training in New York. Uh, it, like, does that provide much of a comparison between like how you guys were to create a, a really strong, cohesive team dynamic in spite of that separation? And how do you think this team has been able to achieve, like, maybe not a similar, but also a really strong bond given that same separation? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to compare all of these things. You know, when we, when we were there in 2012, Seth, Cody, and I had been on teams together since the late 90s, very early 2000s. We, we had been familiar with each other's fencing. We had developed uh, almost like a protocol for, a for approaching um, international team events over a period of, of almost 10 years. We had been the Olympic team in 04 and were consistently part of the world championship teams. Um, you know, throughout the entire, you know, inter intervening time. So from almost an entire decade of, of being in the team. So it was very easy, I think, for us to get past um, a, a physical separation, meaning not training together all the time. And we, again, had a very solid way of approaching team events and, and planning those team events. Um, 
all of the fencers ac except, I guess, Yeser uh, were kind of privy to what we did because they were around, they were starting to be members of the broader U.S. team in the 2012 season, uh, and then I continued and, and sort of introduced them to a little bit of that, um, or at least some, some continuity from that other team into the newer team in, in 2013. And of course, they are all themselves really strong fencers who bring their own ideas and, and have developed in their own way. So, uh, you know, every group of people is different. I, again, am not a member of this team, so I don't know, you know, what their dynamics are and how they approach stuff and what's working and what's not working. But I will say, men's FA is a, is a super, super competitive uh, weapon in the world. I mean, there's more teams that consistently compete in every World Cup or World Championship sometimes has twice as many teams as the other weapons and a lot of those teams are really really good and, and you'll see them upsetting the best teams in the world much more consistently than you see in the other weapons it's just the nature of fa it's the nature of uh the the very strict passivity rules that make it hard to control matches it, it adds a lot of uncertainty to matches and so getting consistency uh is is really tough and you can have a great season as a team and maybe not have the results to show for it. So um, there's a, there's work to be done for them, and, and you know it's it's definitely not over. They've got a lot, they've got a lot of opportunity still to come. And to that point of the range of, of men's epi relative to the other sports here in the 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 America zone, the American teams for the most part, Team USA, pretty much dominance. There's not a real strong uh, challenger in most of the other weapons. But to your point, Manzepe has really strong challengers in, in Venezuela, uh, with Lamardo being a, an Olympic champion, and, and now Canada also placing ahead of, of Team USA in both this first World Cup and uh, the World Championships. What does that mean for Team USA's chance as a team or even, even qualifying individuals? What have they got to focus on with this pressure on their back? Well, right I haven't looked at the individual rankings, and obviously that stuff's sh being shaken up all the time. I, I don't, off the top of my head, know kind of where all the points are right now for all the teams and all the individuals, but, you know, there's only 200 fencers in the Olympics every time. Only one, six of those or so are going to be in the men's FA event. It's very, very few spots. It's very, very hard to get yourself in there, and the only way you can do it is by being you know, super top ranked in the world, you know, really guarantee yourself a spot in there and everything else comes down to, you know, again, a few touches here or there, a couple points here or there. So there's a lot of the season left and everything is going to change. Um, it, it, it changes all the time in the Olympic season and there's tons of pressure and people react to that in different ways, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively. Um, so, you know, it, it definitely does make it harder for the U.S. men's FA team here. Um, that was something that we faced in 2004, and we found a way to you know, fight through that and qualify over uh, a really strong Canadian team and over some other teams. And in 08, uh, it didn't happen for us. We had an, uh, a Venezuelan team that qualified. It was also really, really tight. We actually won medals in a number of events that normally that would have put us in there, but we also had some really tough things happen. We had a lot of adversity that year, injuries and some questionable, you know, officiating and stuff and things like that. So there's there's all sorts of stuff that can impact you over the course of a season. It's it's really hard to stay consistent and, and battle through it. But um, again, it's it's one of the things that's a challenge, but it's also exciting for the men's FA fencers because, you know, if you qualify it means you really earned it here. Whereas for some of the other weapons it's sort of uh, a given and they can move past that stage. FA, it's, it's a little more exciting usually, every quad. Well, uh, d excitement is uh, for sure, and we look forward to following that excitement. Soren, thank you so much. Sure, pleasure.